Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about how we can do optimization uh, with more than two variables. So I can see here I have this uh, shape which is called a paraboloid and, uh, and kind of in the center there's some sort of minimum and, uh, and what I want to do is I want to find the x and y values uh, where I can find that minimum z value. Okay, so I'm going to head over here and, uh, and I have my notebook set up already. You can already see I'm importing pandas and I'm import importing tensor from torch. And, uh, and maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll just define that function that I have. And, uh, and I need to think a little bit carefully about how I'm going to do my parameters. Uh, but what am I going to do down here? I want to basically uh, return something like x squared plus y squared uh, plus x times y. That was, um, if I look back here, that was the uh, formula I was viewing in Drugal, right? So I'm going to do that over here. And the, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to pass in a tensor here, right? It's going to be easier to do the optimization if we have uh, all the values I'm trying to optimize, both x and y, in a single tensor. And so I'm just going to call that tensor x, y. And, um, and what am I going to do down here? I'm going to just pull those values out. I'm going to say x equals x, y of 0, and y equals x, y of 1. And, uh, and I can see that this is minimized when both x and y are 0. So just to make it more interesting, I'm going to kick this over a bit. I'm going to say minus 3 and minus 10. And so let me try this. I'm going to say something like f of, um, you know, I'm going to pass in a tensor. And I'll say something like 0, 0. And, uh, and, and y is that unhappy? Uh, because I need to create the tensor like that. And great. So I can see it's 139 there. And I know it's trying to go to 0 when I have um, x equal to 3 and y equal to 10. So I do that, and sure enough, that's 0, right? And if I move off of that, uh, it, it gets worse, right? So that's good. So I have that function. And then what I want to do is I want to figure out, well, how can I optimize this tensor right here? So what I'm going to have to do is uh, I'm going to create this tensor like so. I'm going to say x, y equals this tensor. And, and then what? Uh, I want to optimize this, so I have to say requires gradient on it, like so. And then I have some sort of loop down here. You say like for i and range of 3. Okay. And, and so now I have to do my optimization. And I do that like so. I have to say like z um, equals f of my xy. And, uh, and maybe for now, let me just try to put off those z values. If I do that, and I can see that if I'm doing my... Um, uh, if I want to have gradients, I need to have d-type of float. So maybe I'll just put this like, so I may actually start at 0, right? 0.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0, and rate, right? So it's not optimizing anything yet, so I keep getting the same z value, which is dread. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, I, I want to keep um, trying to figure out how I'm going to update this. So, so I may have to do something like this. I may have to say something like z.backward compute those gradients so so that's good and, uh, and then I may have to update it somehow so I may have to say something like um, first off let me just do this I each time I do that I would print off my x y dot gradient like so and one of the things that you're going to see is that it keeps changing each time right so every time I, I recompute this it, it's just actually adding to this gradient which started at zero uh, and the way I, I get around this before is that I actually recreated the tensor each time, uh, kind of each iteration through. Here I'm being a little bit different than the earlier demos of that. I'm just trying to keep updating this one. And, and so because of that, I may have to zero it out each time. So, so really I should say something like this. I should say uh, xy.gradient.zero. All right, so I'm going to do that. Great, so now I'm getting these gradients each time. And, uh, and so now I should probably move it, right? So I think that, how, how can I do that? Well, uh, I, I could say something like this, x, y minus equals my gradient. Something like that, so I'm gonna try that. And, and it's completing, right? Kind of, uh, they're using the vocabulary of a graph here. I know I have a leaf. Basically, uh, what it's complaining about is it kind of creates this weird cycle, right? If uh, if I'm updating my tensor based on, on the gradient there, right? Does that kind of also update it? 
And, and so what I have to do here is I'm going to have to bypass the tensor itself and go straight to the underlying NumPy data. So I could do that. And, uh, and, and so that's good, right? So I can kind of update these things. And, and I see these numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger. That's kind of a classic sign that, uh, that I'm kind of bouncing around too quickly, right? So, so, so what I'd like to do is have some sort of learning rate. So I'm gonna have a learning rate like so. And I'm gonna multiply this by my learning rate. Just slow it down a bit. So I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and maybe what I want to do here too is I just want to see like, well, what is X, Y, and what is the gradient? So, so here I have, um, I start at X equals zero and Y equals zero. And my gradient is negative 16 and negative 23. Those are my two slopes at, at that position. And it says my learning rate is, uh, is 0 0.1. That means I want to move my X by 1.6, which I do here. I move that over by 1.6. And I want to move my Y by 2.3, which, which I do right there. So I can see I'm kind of making progress now towards optimizing this thing, all right? So that's all good. Um, let, let's uh, let's just try to see at the end what we actually have. Um, you know, if I if I go down here, what is my x y? And, and so what happens if I if I do this a bunch of times? Like I don't know, say like uh, let's do like twenty five for now. Am I getting closer? I kind of expect it to be, you know, my x value should get close to three. My y value should eventually get close to 10. And that, that's true. And as I kind of do more iterations, you can see that it kind of narrows in on what I'm looking for. If I do 100, that, that's basically 3 and 10, right? So it's able to optimize that. And, uh, and then, you know, if I were to call f down here, that's a very tiny number, right? If I like the exponential notation, right? So I'm getting something that's about 0. Um, so that's all good. Um, so I think what I'd like to do now is I'd like to visualize oh, it's making progress as it does this search. And so I'd like to have tra keep track of some x, y history like this. And, uh, and this will just kind of show each time I go through here, right, I keep updating the x, y, uh, what values do I get there? So, so let me try this. I'm going to say x, y history, not append. I'm going to append x, y. And when I'm all done, I'm going to look at what, what do I have in x, y history. Oh, and that's not a function, is it? And what you see is these are all the same, right? So so that's not good, right? Because really I just have this one, I only have one tensor here and I keep uh, kind of appending the same thing. And so what I may have to do is I may have to copy it like so, and uh, it's complaining, oh, tensors don't have that, uh, that copy thing. So I'm like, okay, well, uh, I remember that's something I have with NumPy. So maybe what I should do is I should first convert it to NumPy and then copy it, and I do that, it's complaining more, and it's saying you can't convert to NumPy if you're keeping track of these gradients, right? Because then it kind of can't keep track of those changes you're making. So what it's telling me is, uh, instead of just saying variable.numpy, uh, I have to say variable.detach.numpy, right? I'm trying to make a copy of it uh, that is outside, that is outside of the, the gradient tracking. So I do that, and now I actually get a history of all these different values. Which is good. I can try to see how it's uh, it's kind of zoom again on what I want, and, and that's going to be easiest to see if I throw that into a data frame. Right? I have a list of a list of arrays, right? So each of those arrays can be like a row, and I can have it like this, right? And I know what these are. Right? I know what the columns are, x and uh, and y, right? So I can try to see. Well, I start at zero, then by the end I get very close to three and ten. So, so that's good. So, so maybe I'm just going to say this is my history, like this. And maybe let me just look at the first bit of it. That's all good. And, um, and then what I want to do is I want to plot it, right? I want to kind of see the journey from the beginning to the end. So I'm going to say history.plot.scatter. And then we have x equals the x column and y equals the y column. And, and you can kind of see what happens, right? I, I kind of start down here at 0, 0. And then at first I'm making these big jumps because I'm really far away. So I have this really strong gradient. And then eventually as we get closer to the end, it's making these smaller and smaller updates until we basically approach, you know, X equals three and Y equals 10. I think one thing that will help uh, make this a little bit more clear <coughs> is if we uh, try to have the color of, of this tail kind of showing how far we are through the progress. And, and so actually, if I look back here at my history.index, and maybe if I make that like a list, 
Um, I could use this as a color scale, right? Where kind of like zero is a very light color, and then uh, and then like um, you know a very large number is black, right? So I could do that, like so. Let me. That was history.index. Down here, I could say, well, I want my color to match or be pulled from history.index. And I do that, I kind of kind of see how that tail zooms in at the end. Uh, now, that, this is not great because right now it's probably mapping zero to white. So I can't see these anymore. Uh, but what I could do is I could say v minimum equals something like uh, negative 50. And what this means is that negative 50 will be white which means that zero will be kind of a light gray color. So I do that, I can try to see that whole journey from beginning to end, how I kind of uh, zoom in on the optimum over the course of these 100, uh, 100 iterations. Okay, so I was able to optimize this function f. Okay, so that was my first example. Uh, let's talk about how we could use this for a regression, right? So let me, let me do that. So, uh, let me do an example of a regression. And uh, in here, the way I may think about it is my two variables that I'm uh, really optimizing over are going to be a slope and an intercept, right? So, so let's think about how we're going to do that. Uh, let me copy all of this down here, actually, and we're going to revise it for a regression example. And, uh, and before I do the regression, let's actually just generate some data so we have something concrete to work with. So I'm going to say uh, PD, oh, actually, let me let me grab NumPy up here. So I'm going to say import NumPy as NP. And then down here, I'm going to say data frame equals uh, PD.data frame. And I'm going to have like this X column, which will be, um, uh, it'll be NumPy.random.uniform. And, uh, and, and I'll go from, I don't know, zero to 20. And, um, and I wanna have like a hundred numbers. So, so let me just peek at that. And, uh, and it's unhappy because it wants a dictionary of columns. So that's good. And, uh, and then what I wanna do is I wanna add in a Y column. So I'm gonna say like Y equals, um, I, I don't know, let's say uh, negative, five um, times uh, my x, and then I'll have an intercept of, let's say like uh, 30. Okay, so let, let's, let's try that. So I have these y values, and, uh, and let me plot that. So I'm gonna say dot plot dot line. Oh, dot plot dot scatter, sorry. And I'm gonna have um, x equals x and y equals y. Like so, let me add a little noise in there as well. I'm going to say numpy dot random dot uh, normal distribution. I'll say the size here equals whatever the length of my data frame is. Maybe let me make that a little bit bigger. I may say something like you know scale scale equals five. Great. Okay, so that should be pretty easy to fit a line to, and uh, and hopefully I may find an intercept of thirty and a slope of negative five. Right. So. Let's think a little bit about this. So, so maybe I'll just try to generalize this to uh, a, b. I have these two variables, a, b, that I'm trying to optimize. And, uh, and what am I really returning here, right? So what I'm trying to optimize now is really some sort of like a mean square error, right? Because whenever I fit a line to this plot here, I, I should be able to compute like how good that fit is. Okay, so how, how can I do that? Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my uh, slope equals um, you know a b of zero, and my intercept equals a b of one. Okay, and then I have to figure out what my predicted y values are. So I'm going to say like y predicted equals, and uh, and what I want to do here is uh, basically pull some data out of that data frame. Right, what I want to do is I want to get both a predicted value and then some actual values uh, and then try to see what the difference is. So, so let, me, let me do this. I'm going to up here um, in my data frame, I am going to say uh, my x values are, are what? I, I could pull out that column, right? I could say uh, df and then uh, x. I may actually pull that off as kind of a vertical column. So I'm going to do this. 
uh, dot values, and then I may convert that to a tensor, right? So I'm gonna say, I wanna have a tensor just like that. Maybe let me just actually do this in a separate cell and try to see what we're working with here. I'm gonna do that, and then I, I have that, so that's good. And, and then the same thing for my Y values, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, for my Y values, I'm gonna go like this. My Y values are gonna be like this. Maybe I'll just leave that as one dimensional for now. And let's peek at that. I have all these Y values. So, so that's good. So, so how can I get my uh, predicted uh, X values? Well, uh, I could take X dot product by slope and then add in my intercept, right? And then what am I gonna do here? Well. I want to get the mean squared error. So I'm going to say my uh, y prediction minus my actual y values, right? So, so this is my errors, right? I'm going to square them, square them. And then what I can do is I can actually just take the mean of this. I'm going to say um, dot mean. And, and at this point, I think that that's kind of tricky to think through. And so I'm going to put all this to a separate cell. And I just want to kind of see how this is working before I go too much farther. I should say mean square error, and I can pass in a tensor here uh, with some values, right? So I have slope and intercept. So what if I say just like zero and zero? Um, so both arguments need to be uh, at least one D, but they are are two D, right? So what what is my problem here? So I think that um, I, I'm doing the dot product on the slope because really, really these are like my coefficients, right? Uh, and so, so that's not great, right? I, I guess I'm kind of using the dot product because I eventually want to generalize to having multiple columns. And, uh, and, and so well, what should I do here? I, I guess I should, uh, let, let, let's simplify a little bit. Let, let, let's just actually, you know, I'm just gonna keep it all one dimensional for now. And, and then I'm just gonna do regular multiplication like this. And I'm gonna put this lower case because I'm just gonna deal with um, kind of one, one field, right? So I'm gonna do that. And, and, and great, so I can see that this line, and what would that line look like up here? I guess the intercept would be zero right here, and it would just be like a flat line all the way across, right? And so, so I can see my error is pretty large there, my mean squared error when I do that. What would be an example of a good line? A, a good line would have um, my intercept around, I don't know, it looks like about 20. What was it before actually? I guess it was 30 was my intercept, and my slope was negative five. So, so if I do something like that, if I say my, uh, my slope is negative five and my intercept is 30, you can see I get a much smaller mean squared error. That's actually a pretty good fit for that data, right? So, so how can I kind of figure out that these are the best numbers that are gonna minimize this? Well, let's head back down here. And, um, and, and so, so now let, let me kind of just uh, rewrite all this. I'm just gonna say that this is A, B. I wanna avoid confusion by using X, Y at everywhere, right? Because now I'm really looking at coefficients, right? Instead of, I'm looking at coefficients instead of um, actual positions on my plot, right? So I may have A, B here. And, and then what am I calling? I'm calling my mean squared error function, right? And that returns an error to me. And that's what I want to do backwards propagation on, right? I want to see, you know, if I'm trying to compute my error as a function of my slope and intercept, what is that? That will kind of tell me how to update my slope and intercept to make this better. Right, all of this down here, right? So I'm gonna change all of this. So let's do all of that. And I'm gonna run that. And I can see, okay, I started zero, zero. And uh, let's just say tail to see what it is at the end. Uh, I get pretty close to 310, which is, is strange because that was my old data. So not XY history. A B history. Okay, so that's no good. So let's um let's look at the head again. Can I see where I went wrong? Do you see what's happening here? These numbers start getting these very large magnitude very quickly. Classic case where my learning rate is not is not small enough. Right, I'm trying to update too quickly and it's kind of bouncing out. So if I look at the tail now, let's see what I'm converging on. Uh, it's still kind of bouncing out too quickly. Let me make it even a little smaller. And so now I see this is better. My numbers are kind of a reasonable size, but am I getting to what I wanted to? 
Not really. I wanted to have a slope of negative 5 and an intercept of 30. So, so maybe I should run this for some more iterations. So I do that, and it's starting to get better. What if I do like, um, I'm going to learn slightly faster. If I do that, and I, I'm getting pretty close now, right? And actually, this is, this is not this anymore. This is my slope. This is my intercept. I do that. Be very close. What if I run it for like 10,000 uh, iterations? That runs for a moment. And now I see it's actually very close. My slope is, is roughly negative 5, and my intercept is roughly uh, 30. Right? So I could actually do a fit line at that point. Right? So, so let, let me just try to do my final fit line. If I go back to here where I have my data scatter, let, let's do this again. And head down here. So that's good. I, I want to pull out my um, slope and my intercept. So I have these things in AB, right? And I can say dot data. And then it's a tensor. And I, so I can say something like slope and intercept equals that. Let me take a peek at that slope. And intercept, what did I get here? Those are tensors. And, and so really I'd like to be uh, just kind of pulling this out to NumPy. All right, so I'm going to do that. And now I can see, okay, I just have these plain simple numbers. And so I can I can have a slope based on that. So so let me do this. I'm gonna say um, ax here. I'm gonna say ax dot plot. And then I have my you know x values, my y values for my line, and then I want it to be like um let's say I have like a, a black line here. So my x values will be whatever the x range is. So I'm gonna say ax dot get uh, x limit. Let me actually just uh, do this for now. I'm just going to put a, I'll say something like zero and, and zero. Uh, get x lim, is that it? There we go. Great, so I have to figure out what my y values are. And so on the left-hand side, I have this x, right? So maybe I should do it like this. I should say like um, uh, x zero equals this, and x one equals this. And I can say y zero equals x0 times slope plus intercept and then then same deal for y1 right so y1 is this i can actually even just simplify this more here right i can go from x0 to x1 then y0 to y1 and i can actually see i kind of uh, was able to get a good fit uh iteratively right and, and if i had stopped sooner right if i had done like you know a thousand iterations only then you can see the fit isn't quite as good, right? Or what if I do even less? What if I do like 100? Then you can see that, oh, I, I wasn't rerunning it. That's why it was good. So you can try to see that the more iterations I do, the closer I'll be, right? So what if I did only like, um, you know, 50 iterations, right? If I run that, it's even worse. What if I did like something like just like 10 iterations? Then it's very close to that original line. Right? Actually, it doesn't seem like it was changing that much. Let me just try like um, three iterations. I feel like it's trying the same thing every time. Why is that? Oh no, it's changing. I guess uh, I guess it's only near the end. So here the intercept is very close to zero, right? Whereas if I go up to like a thousand, Sorry, just uh, the numbers were changing. Just visually, I wasn't seeing it because it's kind of over a bigger range. There we go. We can see the difference now. And then if I actually go up to, I don't know, like let's say like five thousand. There we go. It's a good fit again. And, and and of course, this would all work fine if we had more variables as well, right? In that case, what would I do differently? I want to just be doing this time element wise by a single slope number. Uh, I would be trying to capture all the coefficients here, and I'd be multiplying those by each row.